Hello, it's Lydia here from Screen Portal. In this video, we'll have a look at the life of the world's most complex baby that has a vocabulary as big as his head. Damn you, vile woman! You've impeded my work since the day I escaped from your wretched womb. So, we'll be charting Stewie Griffin's entire life, from his birth, his relationship specifically with Brian, as well as looking into his future. And I will be revealing Stewie's real voice, as well as whether or not the family can even understand him. This is the complete Stewie Griffin timeline. When the world is mine, your death shall be quick and painless. The birth of Stewie. Let's start at the very beginning, and I literally mean the very beginning, at his conception. We see Sperm Stewie was a conniving little thing before even popping out of Lewis, blasting his competition in order to enter the egg first. And he was victorious, but in doing so, found himself trapped inside a confined enclosure for nine months, slowly going insane. Until finally there was a light at the end of the tunnel and Stewie was born, or as he would say, the fruition of my deeply laid plans to escape from that cursed ovarian Bastille. Stewie's high ambitions for world domination was evident from his birth, as he was already hatching plans to take over Europe in the womb. And also, due to some time travel shenanigans in which time went in reverse due to a time machine malfunction, Stewie was actually born twice. Time regressed until he was <coughs> reinserted back into Lewis, and when Brian was able to correct the flow of time, Stewie was born again for the second time. Pretty gross, but also pretty cool. And although Stewie's signature football-sized head was that shape when he was born, there was a flashback way back when, showing that he had a regular round head until he hit it on the ceiling while bouncing on a bed. Aged 1-2, to two, present day. In the early season, Stewie's constantly plotting ways to kill his mother. Lois constantly and unwittingly thwarted his schemes and so he decided to kill her to carry out his nefarious plans without her interference. And he almost succeeded on several occasions but failed at the very last moment. Damn, she moved! At one point, it seemed as though he would finally accomplish his lifelong quest as while on a cruise ship, he pumped her full of lead. She fell into the water and looked as though she was going to be gone for good. After then framing Peter for Lois's death, she miraculously survived the avalanche of bullets and came back to announce that Stewie did try to kill her. With this secret out and hell bent on power, he gained access to the supercomputer and took control of the global power grid. And with everything now under his power, Stewie became president of the world. But right on cue, when it looked like he had just achieved his goal, Lois smashed through the White House window to stop his reign of terror. The two then battle, with Stewie getting the upper hand on his mother. But just before he could pull the trigger, Peter arrived and blasted his son. But it was all revealed to be a simulation all along, and none of it actually happened. I suppose I'm not ready to kill Lois or take over the world. Yet. Since then, Stewie has pretty much entirely given up his quest for world domination and to kill his mother. No longer a one-note evil baby, he has grown considerably as a character. For the most part, the show has shifted away from his motive of world domination and revenge, and instead focuses on his eccentric and flamboyant personality. So now Stewie uses his advanced intellect to create futuristic gadgets like time machines. One of the most discussed aspects of Stewie is his ambiguous sexuality. I love the show. Do you need a gay friend on the show? A friend on the show? He had an on and off relationship with a little girl named Olivia and fell for a girl named Julie while acting on a show together. But he's also shown a considerable interest in men too. In 15 Minutes of Shame, he said that he didn't really like women and thought they would be more interesting if he turned out gay. Wouldn't it be marvellous if I turned out to be a homosexual? As well as the countless of other scenes showing Stewie's interest in men. Now, there were plans to make Stewie come out as gay completely in 2009, which was confirmed by creator and voice actor Seth MacFarlane. We had an episode that went all the way to the script phase in which Stewie comes out, but we decided it's better to keep it vague, which makes much more sense because he's a one-year-old. Now, we can't talk about Stewie without discussing his immense vocabulary that surpasses his siblings, parents, and friends. Jeez, what, you carry a thesaurus around with you? 
He also talks with a distinct English accent, despite the fact that the Griffins hail from Quahog Road Island, USA. But in a therapy session, Stewie admitted that the accent is fake, and he faked it in order to sound smarter than everyone else around him. He had carefully cultivated a persona in order to hide his true self, scared of how others will perceive the real him. In a rare moment of vulnerability, Stewie finally lets down his wall, revealing his true voice. For once, to talk with my real voice without the, the burden of trying to sound like someone I'm not! Feeling like a huge weight's been lifted, he even made plans to reveal his true self to others. But when he realised that he would be like everyone else, he reconsidered and reverted back to his fake British accent. All of a sudden, his therapist has a heart attack and pleads with Stewie to get his heart medication. Realising that his therapist was the only person to know of his dark secret, he chose to let him die. This is super dark, but also extremely revealing showing that Stewie would rather live a lie than allowing himself to be vulnerable. One of the biggest mysteries in Family Guy is whether or not anyone can even understand Stewie. Much like his sexuality, this is very ambiguous. Sometimes they can understand him, and other times not so much. It appears that the children can understand him fine, but it seems that the adults only really get the gist of what Stewie is saying. Well, I get the gist of what you're saying, Stewie. And we kind of get an answer to this in the season 19 episode, Stewie's First Word. Whilst getting progressively angry at church, Stewie cried out a swear word. Stewie said his first word, and it was a swear. Lois found herself shunned because of his outburst and tried to find the source of his coarse language. Later on, Lois shouted out a swear and realised that she was the cause of his cursing. The episode then ended with Stewie saying his second word. Mommy! Thus showing that Stewie really has given up on his grudge against Lewis, and maybe he doesn't hate her as much as he pretends to. One of a few who can understand Stewie completely is his dog Brian, who also happens to be Stewie's best friend. This isn't surprising seeing as all the crazy adventures they've been on together. They've gone backwards and forwards in time, have shrunk down to a microscopic level, they've crossed over into the multiverse, and have even journeyed to the North Pole in order to meet Santa. Not bad for a dog and a baby. And although they give each other a hard time, you can see that deep down they love each other very much, and are more family than friends. After Quagmire's rant about how Brian is the worst person he's ever met, let's not forget that it was Stewie who consoled him. I like you. Thanks. One of the most standout and intimate moments between the pair was when they found themselves trapped in a bank safe overnight. Brian admitted to keeping a loaded gun in his safe in case he wanted to end it all, as he felt that he has no purpose in life. In a very raw and real moment, Stewie said that he would be lost without Brian, claiming that he is the only person in the world he really cares about. You give my life purpose, and maybe, maybe that's enough. When Brian was run over and killed by a speeding car, Stewie was naturally devastated, having lost his best and only true friend in the world. To get him back, Stewie jumped back into the past, just in time to push Brian out of the way of the car. With the timeline of Brian dying no longer existing, Stewie fades out of existence, sacrificing himself for his friend. Now that's true friendship. They are so close that Stewie even had Brian's hybrid puppies. Wait, what? Stewie's adult years. We get a glimpse into Stewie's future life in the season 4 episode, Stu and Stewie's Excellent Adventure. When Stewie sees an older version of himself on television, he believes that he's found his biological father. He tracks him down in San Francisco and he's revealed as the 35 year old Stewie. It turns out that older Stu was on vacation. In the future, people take vacations not to destinations, but to periods of time. He then bids farewell to his past self, and just before he teleports back into his own time, Stewie hops on and stows away with him to the future. Stewie is shocked to find that he hasn't taken over the world in the future, but is instead a 35-year-old virgin working at the Quahog Circuit Shack, living by himself in a filthy apartment. Will you, sir, are pathetic! Not the life you'd expect for a baby who could perhaps recite Chaucer. Determined to get his life back on track, Stewie remodelled Stu's apartment and helped him to lose his virginity to a co-worker called Fran, which didn't go too well. Yeah, I'm gonna go. However, Stewie only made Stu's life worse when his apartment catches on fire due to some scented candles. 
With his life literally reduced to ashes, Stu revealed that when he was 20, his memories of a near-death experience caused him to never take risks ever again, which is the cause for his miserable life. To stop this future from happening, Stewie bids farewell and travels back to stop it. He prevents himself getting crushed by a chair, and the present Stewie thanks him by vaporizing him. Very harsh. So because he altered this future, the one we saw earlier, most likely never happened. We do get another glimpse into Stewie's future in a 2021 episode. In a brief flash forward, an older Stewie is in a romantic relationship with a man named Tyler. Rich Old Stewie We get another glimpse into Stewie's future in a season 18 episode. In the far future, Stewie is living it up, loaded and living in California. But when Brian brings word that Peter is dying, Stewie has to travel back to Quahog. Talking to Peter on his deathbed, his dad asks him to take care of the family when he's gone. I will. I promise. When his father passes away, Stewie vows to support the family. However, this all turns out to be a ruse, and the Griffins were in cahoots in order to take Stewie's wealth. But ever the genius, Stewie was onto their plan the entire time, filling the house with gas so when the family lights the celebratory cigar, the house explodes and kills everyone. But as it turns out, none of this actually happened, and it was all a fancy inside Stewie's mind while he was shopping for an old man costume for Halloween. So of course, this isn't canon, and it's probably for the best, as I don't think Stewie and Brian would ever be so cruel to each other. And overall, we've seen other glimpses into Stewie's old age through a couple of cutaways throughout the show. Back in my day, we had Katy Perry, Justin Bieber. That was real music. But for now, that's it. There we have it folks, that ends the complete timeline of Stewie Griffin, so far. So my little screen surfers, what's your favourite Stewie moment and let me know whose timeline you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and see you later.